What's going on, Peace Players family across the world and in South Africa? My name is Douglas Needab, and I am here for your very first edition, very first episode of a web series called Coaches Unbox. And I'm here in Lamarville with... Janelle Gisela, from my PSP coach, and Lawrence Era Gordonita. And we're here at Bantu Bugani, where it all started for Danielle in 2001. Let's get going. Netball for the girls. Netball for the girls, soccer for the boys. So no idea about what basketball was at this point. Was basketball a popular sport in Lamontville or was it kind of something you just saw on the side? We only had two sports in Lamontville at the time. Two sports? Only two? Not just at the school, but in the whole community as a whole. Only two were popular. But obviously the older guys played basketball outside. As a community team. Okay, okay. But for everyone else, we only had basketball, uh, netball, and so on. Uh, Not sport for choice. You don't have facilities. Yeah. Lamonville is too small. Grade seven plus. So if you have community teams that want to train anywhere, they are forced to ask for help or for schools like Ivan Tuvani, Nepegapanville to accommodate them. That's the only way you can practice. So when you say it's not any courts in Lamarville, you mean there's very few courts in Lamarville, not necessarily? They're not community courts. Not community courts, okay. So Private the schools court. are closed, basketball court is closed. Okay, gotcha. We used to have a basketball Things happen to our basketball And this is definitely? Definitely not here. Okay. <laughs> I think this basketball court was Built by his players after I've left. So it definitely wasn't one of the origin courts. Nonetheless, it looks like it's holding up pretty strong. But again, we appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to take a seat. We're going to take a seat. We're going to talk to today a little bit more about our experience, not just uh, at Bantu Bugani, but in basketball in general and peace players and what she's doing now. So tune in. Tell me a little bit about the memory that you might have on this court, um, at this school, and in this community. Let's say started going to the school 2001, grade five. Don't think we were allowed to play sports in grade five, so I only started playing netball in grade six. Made the B team, grade seven, made the A team. Played center, the worst position you could play in netball. There was nothing much happening sports wise. Actually, started doing public speaking. Part of the debate. I can see that for you. I was part of the debate team. Went to bed. Actually, did a. I was in the debate team with one of the guys who was involved in basketball after about to after a high school. Then he kind of disappeared. So do the crack. But sports wise, I don't have a lot of memories because back in the day. Lamont is too small, we don't have facilities. Well, we're not sports for choice. So whatever you've got at school at that time, it's whatever you had to work with. Some of us did it first, some of us did it. Gotcha. Yeah, and I guess it's fitting that the first sport you played was netball because uh, netball has a lot of similarities to uh, basketball. And it was a new sport for me when I came out here. I've grown used to it now. Um, so I'm curious, you know, if, if, if basketball wasn't a point in your face early on, um, what was kind of the things that your family uh, was into other than maybe netball? Uh, were they asking you to focus solely on school? Was it some of the other sports that they kind of wanted you to get involved in? How was your upbringing like? Um, and if you could tell us a little bit about your family experience with that. Family doesn't like sports. Mm -hmm. They were never into sports. Also because of some medical conditions, had some deficiencies. I have cause of deficiency and I have deficiency. Mm -hmm. So sports wasn't really at the top of the list. They were like, focus on your school. So when I decided to drop out of school, started pursuing my basketball career, they always asked me, so when are you quitting basketball and going back to school? That's the thing. But you play sport because the curriculum at school say you need to play some, you need to teach you something, you need to play sport. That's how I play sport. But from the family side, so no athletes, no sports people, nothing. And I, would, and I would take it you guys weren't the tallest, the tallest, <laughs> <laughs> the 
because I definitely wasn't. You know, I wasn't. I was, I was a little bit height challenge. I would say. Uh, my family, I didn't have six, <laughs> six five people in my family, so I was assuming the same was for you. No. No. I'm not sure to my family. Everybody else is My younger sister is taller than me. You guys had a little bit maybe more better than that. So for me, playing sports was also hard to put a point. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But yeah, despite the height thing, gotcha. can still play sports that's designed for tall people. Gotcha. Alright, so, so family wasn't big on sports. Community only had really netball and soccer. Yet we're sitting here today and we're reflecting on your story, which has a lot to do with basketball. Um, so even though basketball didn't start for you here at Bantu Bugani, um, I guess when was a sport introduced to you? Um, were there people that you were watching early on who played basketball who influenced you to play? Uh, how was that process for you? Basketball influenced me. Mm -hmm. Started playing basketball when I was in grade 11, Too soft for me. <laughs> it, it was. It was too girly. Um, 2007, yeah, 2007, 2011, decided to start playing basketball. Only had one team, obviously, so I made the A team. Um, I made chicken. Were that good? Were that good? I, I, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know whether everyone around me was just that bad. Or, but 2008, made captain of the basketball team. Then after that, I went to PMB. At that time, was huge at sports, especially, especially basketball. I played for UKZN basketball team. Three years, and then I was asked to choose between being a player and being an official. And what, what age was this? What grade? In varsity. In varsity. UKZN, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then national basketball asked me to choose between being a player and being an official. Just being an official. I had the honor of working alongside Arnold. I think he's ranked top referee in South Africa right now. No, he is actually. And did Arnold come through Peace Player programs or? No, well, Arnold is from PMP, that's why I met him. Okay. So when I moved to PMP, started playing basketball that side, I was introduced to Arnold. Uh, he was, I think, that year or around those years, he, he got his FIBA license. Then there was Sui and all the other guys who were internationally accredited. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got drawn into being an official. So basically, you were a basketball player uh, starting in grade 11, and then when you went on to university, um, which I would say is, is pretty big because not too many people can say they uh, played, they played basketball, basketball for two years and then went to university and you know got scholarships and things like that. So kudos to you. But it sounds like somewhere in your journey, somebody sparked the interest in your mind to make it on the basketball admin side rather than just playing. So that didn't happen until university. So. Now you were able to kind of, I guess, look at different ways to give back to the game, uh, to support the game. Um, so how has basketball admin, I guess, been for you from the beginning to now? When my uh, journey as a basketball administrator or the administrative side of basketball started, um, is when I moved back to Etewini. Then I started officiating for EPA. I worked with Letta. Letta is big on admin. So that's why I learned about my admin. In 2016, the admin. 2016, I was with the Lawrence program. We did a short course on sports coaching and administration. So that's how. So that process, the seven months with the YES program, where they taught you the sports coaching side, administrative side of sports. Okay. And Lois, I know Lois is, is big for a lot of the peace player coaches that have come through. Not everyone has been selected for a YES program. Um, so kudos to you for being uh, elected for that. Uh, but I want to know if, if, if Laureus came about through Peace Players and at what point did Peace Players come into your basketball journey? Because I don't think we had touched on that exactly to this point. December 2015. I spoke to him too. I think we had Christmas games. So we have these games um, on the 25th in Gabon. It was a Christmas game. So I was attending one of the Christmas games. I went to Mtu, he was a Peace Players HR person at that time. Like you know, out of everyone in Lamontville, I'm the only one who's never played, uh, who's never worked for Peace Players. In January 2016, he told me to send to my CV, send my CV, and I was hired. Because I had the basketball background and I was uh, accredited, I was already at national level at that time. Uh, 
What position did you, did you get hired for at that time? Uh, PSP coach. PSP coach. I was coach. I was hired as an assistant coach, so I got into it as I got new. Yeah. <laughs> and how was how was that experience like for, uh, for you coaching in a, in a color community? I know you. Or correct me if I'm wrong, but you probably were accustomed to Lamontville and, and being amongst you know your people and people that you grew up with. So how was it now um, teaching the game of basketball in a whole other community outside of you? First, do you know the stories between the communities in Durban? How the communities didn't get along in the past. Yeah, yeah. So that was my first time going into Antwerp because of the history, yeah. obviously. It's a color community. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I have nothing in Antwerp. So the first time I ever went to a trip was two kids players when I became a coach. It was never again. It wasn't easy. But the peace player t-shirt, the peace player logo plays a huge role in this community. So it was easy for me to transition into the community and get accepted as a peace player's coach, someone who's bringing positive change into the community. Yeah, the peace player shirt goes a long way. <laughs> it goes a long way. And, and to be honest, it probably has saved some people more than often. But, um, yeah, I do think that even like when when people come to citywide tournaments, that's one thing they look forward to is receiving like, the, the, the peace player shirt. Um, and a lot of people probably have some <laughs> collections out there. Uh, a lot of my shirts have gone missing, but it's cool. It's cool. I hope now. Ten years worth of collection. Um, and I, I want to transition into what you mean for Lamont, because I know you mean a lot. You probably won't say it, but <laughs> I know I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people that have um, spoke about you. Positive light and, and in terms of fever and accreditation, I know that was big for you and Arnold. Kind of your first uh, experience with fever encounter, right? Fever encounter, and now you've done a lot for people here. So, talk about what fever means for you and why you kind of made a point to put other coaches in position. The only reason I'm getting guys people accredited is. We need to get out of the township. We need to see, there's so much basketball happening outside Lamontville. There's a lot of basketball happening outside David Inn. My focus is getting as many people as I can to experience the same things I experienced. My thing is not just, let's go to FIBA. There are a lot of avenues that I've gone through. Your peace players, I've been everywhere with peace players. Uh, Glorious, obviously. Kazanian basketball, Etekwini basketball. So a lot of people and a lot of organizations played a role in me being where I am. But for other guys who are not as lucky, we try to find an alternative for them. So if FIBA is going to work for one person, let's focus on pushing that person in the FIBA direction. If EPA is going to work for another person, or if school basketball is going to work for someone else. So we try to, I try to place people in positions that are going to work for them at that time. So the FIBA guys, we were in a position where we could get guys accredited and KZN was, is still seen as one of the um, provinces that produces top technical officials in SA. So why not capitalize on that? Let's get more guys accredited and have it more supported. Uh, and how, how many would you say uh, have been accredited from the area or that you generally know about? In SA, really? And are you are you kind of the, the facilitator of accreditation in terms of technical officials in the municipality? Or is it multiple people? So right now, I don't think we have the powers to get people accredited. Mm -hmm. What I have is connections to get them accredited. So they don't know who to talk to. So we get registered with the National Basketball University. Mm -hmm. Then the National Basketball registers us with FIBA. So if I know a person who has the ability to get us accredited, mm -hmm. I talk to that person. And mm -hmm. I think currently we have in Etaguini seven people accredited table officials and three people accredited officials. And how many of those guys come from, <laughs> come from the market? Six table officials. Six table out of seven. That's all right right there. I, I, would, I, would, I would accredit it to you. I'm not sure if you would accredit it to yourself, but I'd accredit it to you, so kudos to you on that. Um, oh, but also, no, the period where we got accredited was during uh, the lockdown. So I didn't really have access to everyone else. The guys I could talk to, the guys I could right. reach out to were just guys around me. You know? yeah. Look, so you made something out of, out of nothing. I know a lot of people who were going through some crazy times. Uh, and that was 2020. 2021, yeah, so 
really was all about kind of making the most of the opportunities that you had in front of you. Um, so talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the things that you have done with Peach players in terms of maybe travel, uh, any of the trips that were kind of eye-opening for you. I know FIBA in itself, you've been able to travel to Johannesburg. I've seen you in Johannesburg. I know you've been to PNB and even probably outside of the country. Um, I'm sure you could tell me a little bit more about it. But uh, what are some eye-opening things that you have done with Peach players um, that you've enjoyed? I think the highlight for me when I worked for Peace Players was the trip to Cyprus, leadership uh, camp. Mm -hmm. I love, love Middle East Peace Players. Yeah, <laughs> everyone. I think I got to experience and see what else Peace Players can offer. And with e Middle East, they're more focused on the girl child, on the girls. So they have a lot of girls playing basketball there. For me, being from Elamonville, my focus was Firstly, working with the disadvantaged, then working with the girls, like get females involved in sports. So that really caught my eye and it was one of uh, my life changing moments, seeing so many girls from the from Middle East playing basketball through these players. In Cyprus, you guys were in Cyprus, we in saw the Middle East girls come in. So in Cyprus, we had um, Peace Players, South Africa, Middle East, Northern Ireland and the Cyprus, we had four sides out of the yeah. five. Um, but basketball is big in Middle East when it comes to their Female, girls. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, that is the core of their program, so. Um, and they start playing at a very young age. They do. They so do. imagine if we had to start doing that in our country, yeah. get them playing from. Mm -hmm. And they're really good too. <laughs> yeah. they're really good. And they have a competitive team also. So what are some things that you would like to see? For done, girls. Done in the community. Um, I don't know. One, maybe a project whether there be a project that you're working on or a project that you could see uh, Peace Players facilitating, even if you could uh, serve as a project manager one day, what would you say is, is one of the initial things that you would do for girls in basketball in Lamontville? So the change doesn't start with me and the girls from Lamontville. The change starts with Dineo is the first female to do this. Dineo is the only female in basketball doing this. Why am, the, why am I the first one? Why am I the only one? So for me, that's where the change should start before we start focusing on the kids. Because now we're grooming these girls, but when they get to the top or where they, when they see um, people from other, from other organizations coming through, how many females are they seeing making decisions? Right. So we need to start at the top. Why is Dineo the only one? Why is Dineo the first, the first one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to see more female in leadership positions. Of course. So that the young girls can see that there's hope. There's something to aspire to. Absolutely. Right now we're just seeing a lot of males making decisions for us Absolutely. on how we play basketball, on how we should dress, how we should conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. like, why can't you have more females telling us that, doing that for us? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think it's important for uh, Nasipi in the position that she's in because a lot of young girls uh, look, look at her um, and they do see that aspiration of what they can become outside of actually playing again yeah. versus the WNBA. That's on the basketball admin side, like you said. Um, so it's good to see people like the CP in the position that they're in, for sure. Um, I mean, when it comes to girls, there's a lot, there's a lot we need to change. Mm -hmm. Even outside Peace Players, outside Lamontville. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Why is it that only girls can become table officials? Why are we pushing more girls to become table officials? Mm -hmm. Why are we not getting guys involved in table officiating? Yeah. It shouldn't be something special to have girls involved in sports, but now how do we change that? Yeah. It should be it should be a norm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, and it was also good to see Slenda. Yes. Also become a referee because I haven't seen many, even female referees where I'm from back home. So seeing Slenda get in a position to where she's also female, she's FIBA. FIBA, and she's one of your good friends also. So <laughs> maybe talk about that process, uh, seeing her. Um, kind of grow into her position. I think I'm Slender's biggest cheerleader when it comes to hair refing in basketball. I, I want to see her go everywhere. Um, I remember the first international trip we took, well, trip we took outside um, South Africa. I was with Slender. We were in Swaziland. Swaziland was hosting this huge basketball tournament. We traveled to Swaziland by a taxi, just the two of us, to go to the tournament. Mm -hmm. Didn't know any, any person there. We had been communicating with the organizers over the phone. Like, okay, get on the taxi. This is where you jump off. When you get there, ask them, tell them this is where you're going. First time going out of the country with Linda yeah. on a basketball tournament, that is. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I think we got our passports <laughs> two days before the trip. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only reason you had our passports done. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I know a lot of people that that is what holds them back actually. The fact that the they don't have the passport situation in order. So anybody out there, I would encourage you guys to make sure your passport <laughs> situation is in order because to be a part of the leadership development program. <laughs> Uh, which gets you involved in things like the friendship games, you need to have your passport in order. So get your passport in order. <laughs> um, and to wrap things up, I, I want to talk, uh, one, about the friendship games, which I know you were involved in locally in 2019, um, and also the Leadership Academy, which are both Peace Players Initiative. Friendship games, 2019, August 2019. When I first arrived in, in South Africa, probably about... Two weeks. Yeah, about two <laughs> weeks or so. It was fun. And you were heavily involved with that. You weren't a Peace Players employee, no, right. but you were helping out. So I want to um, get your take on your experience with Friendship Game, what it was like seeing an, an initiative like that being conducted um, at a school. You actually went to UK in indoor. Um, so what was that experience like for you with Peace Players and seeing that here? First of all, I'm all for anything basketball. Give me something on paper, we try to make it happen. If it works, Great, if it doesn't, we tried. Mm -hmm. uh, the friendship games, I think it was the first of its kind, bringing kids from the different schools, because I saw some really, really privileged schools coming together with um, really, really disadvantaged schools. And that's how I think uh, the, friend, uh, the friendship between Hybri and Gobezela was created. And it has continued still uh, since that day. So for me it was actually what Peace Players stands for, Bridging the divides between the two communities and for, ES, for East Africa, it's actually that bringing together your disadvantaged and your advantaged schools and communities. So I'm glad to see that the, some relationships are still happening, they're continuing, mm -hmm. and obviously bringing the two genders together in one playing venue. Yeah. See how the girls' school reacted being around boys and how your boys' schools kind of reacted and changed being around the girls. Yeah. 100%. So it wasn't just bringing together the different races, also your different genders coming together. People who usually not be in the same tournaments. Yeah, De definitely. How's the friendship thing going, by the way? It's going good. Um, I think this year, they're, well, I know this year, they're supposed to have the big friendship games all together in the Middle East in August. So that's when all of our sites will come together. Um, and they'll have a weekend of leadership development, of team building activities, of basketball, visiting historical places in Jerusalem and Israel, Tel Aviv. It's going to be amazing. I wish I could be there, but a lot of our office, well, not a lot, but at least two or three of our office staff members will be there, along with the leadership development program that I was telling you about a little bit earlier. Um, that isn't quite what LDP was back when you were there, but it's a little bit different now. It's, um, it's, a, it's a twist off of what Friendship Games was and taking kids from different communities and bringing them together at, as one LDP team. So it'll be good to see uh, that come to fruition finally uh, after three years of kind of doing it virtually or two years of doing it virtually. So we'll see uh, how that goes. But uh, I'm sure you'll be involved moving forward. Hopefully you will. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, on the leadership thing. Yeah. So what's yeah. happening with that? Yeah, so that's what I was about to get into right now. So um, Leadership Academy is an initiative that uh, globally they're trying to make sure that each site has a certain amount of alumni who are able to uh, contribute their thoughts and ideas on the trajectory of the programs at that site and have uh, input on the changes that could be made to make sure that the impact is maximized. Um, so I know you have been reached out to about being on the Leadership Academy uh, in South Africa uh, for Peace Players. I know you have a ton of ideas, a ton of ideas to bring forth, and I know that Peace Players holds a special place in your heart. I don't have a ton of ideas, I've changed. Yeah, so I'm right now I'm more focused on the academics. Mm -hmm. What can sports do for you to get where you want to, do, to go? Uh, a few years back I, start, um, I joined this initiative uh, by Uleta Zulu, no Noma, no Pilile. Mm -hmm. I think some other guys were involved also. Uh, where we took kids from KZN, from districts around KZN, mm -hmm. took them to the Ashraf tournament in Jobrek, and from there they got scouted by different universities. So from there, that's where my focus was. Also, when I joined the, uh, when I was part of the Laureus thing, the Laureus program, it was Sports for Change. This player uh, works with Sports for Social Change Network. Mm -hmm. So for many people at grassroots sports, I'm using sports to change um, a certain. Uh, social ill. For me, I wanted to use, I still want to use sports to get kids to tertiary. 
So if I'm going to be part of a program that gives me an opportunity to do that, I'll run with it. No, don't, I'll run it. No, that's, that's my thing. Okay. Yeah. To, to an extent that, when I saw that, I kids, fine, we could get them scholarships, but they couldn't really get into university because of the point system. Yeah. So now, how do we change that? Went back to school, got my teaching degree. So now I'm in a position where I can assist at that level. Yeah. Absolutely. And I also want to give you credit for like adapting with the time. You knew that you needed to do certain things in order to make the impact the way that you wanted to make the impact. Uh, so salute to you for having like the wherewithal uh, to do that. Uh, and, and like I said, I think that the Leadership Academy is the perfect time for you to merge your focuses and your past experiences with peace players and how much I know you have a heart for peace players and, and what we do not only in South Africa but across the globe. Uh, so just to wrap up a few things, I, I want to know or tell our viewers out here, you know, what you're doing now, what's your focus now, um, because I know what you're doing, but let the viewers know, and you know, what are your aspirations for the future uh, in terms of your impact, impact, whether that's through basketball or through academics. I want you to know or, or tell the people kind of what your vision is for the future, for yourself and your community. Okay, first of all, my vision for basketball is to have every child playing sports or playing basketball. We need to we need to bring basketball back into our communities. I think for the past years we've been in a position where we've been slowly losing kids and we've been losing the basketball identity and we don't understand how much impact or what difference we make in these kids' lives. So I want to bring basketball back to our communities. Um, on a personal level, I think I want to focus more on my growth and the new career that I've chosen. And was that? Just so the viewers know. <laughs> I've chosen to become a natural sciences and life sciences teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went back to my academic science. Woman is, yeah. So I'm back in sciences now. So I, I would like to focus on that. But my thing is, if a new opportunity comes, I'm still the first person basketball people think of. So I want to change that. Yeah. I, I, in five years, I want to be out. I don't want to be as involved in basketball as I am or as I was in the past. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you want to use basketball, you want to use basketball as a bridge for kids to be able to expand their ideas and aspirations for their future. You just want people to know that it doesn't begin and end with the game yeah. at the end of the day. Because I think that that's where a lot of kids get caught up in. They see LeBron James and Steph Curry on TV, um, and also a lot of WNBA players as well. And a lot of South African players. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I know there's a guy I used to look up to when the PNL started playing in SA. Huh? He was the only guy from Lamontville that played in the, in the PNL. Okay, you have to no. enlighten me, please. I do not know his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not dropping names. We just had one guy from Lamontville playing in the VNL. Like, one day we'll be there. Okay, gotcha. Now we have more than one. Yeah. You want me to drop names? You know, you don't have to. So, cool. yeah. Anyway. But all I know is whenever he came back to Lamontville, like, yeah, he's bang, tough a thing. Want to play basketball with him. We wanted to go on court because he was there. Oh, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Well, look, uh, I, we're going to sign off. We're going to sign off. This has been great. I appreciate your time and energy that you brought to this, this interview, taking me back to somewhere where sports started for you. Um, but this is your community at the end of the day. Um, I just want you to leave a message for the young girls out there. You can look in the camera. Um, I know we've been having this. <laughs> I know we've been having this conversation one-on-one. -on -one. Um, again, this dialogue has been important and I think a lot of young girls will take a look at this interview. Um, and even though you may not uh, feel like this, but a lot of young girls do look up to you just like they look up to Nasibi. Uh, so just leave them like a message that you have for them. If you're a young girl, maybe in, in primary school, about to go into high school, uh, in terms of your like, mindset, what do you think is important to have? And a few words that you would just leave them. For the young girls, always have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. If plan A doesn't work, always have something to fall back on. If plan B doesn't work, have something else. Don't just 
don't let people limit you don't limit yourself there's so much happening for girls especially in basketball right now uh, there's a lot happening for girls in sciences there's a lot of happening for girls everywhere so don't let anyone tell you what you can or can't do don't let your height limit you most importantly and your physical strength just do whatever you want to do well that's for the girls <laughs> Family. My name is Douglas Nidab again. This is our very first edition of Coach's um, Box. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate you. Tune in maybe next week for another edition of Coach's Unbox. Peace.